Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today, I've got the most requested lesson I've ever had on any of my socials when I put in a thing, hey, thinking about doing some new lessons, what do you want? Always the front runner by a country mile is, Justin, please teach us how to play scales with a metronome. <laughs> okay, whoever said that, right? That's, that's like an alternate reality. Nobody wants to practice scales. When I was growing up, it was like, all my teachers were saying, you should learn these scales, you should do this. And I just never wanted to get involved with it because I thought they were boring and stupid and like I just, there was no point to them. But scales are actually a really great thing to practice. You've got to learn how and why you're going to practice the scale so that it makes sense for you to do it. If you don't get those things, then you shouldn't be practicing scale. So learning scales are great for improvising. So if you learn a scale, you learn what notes sound good with a certain bunch of chords and it'll really enable your improvising to come on like so much better than if you tried to do it without learning scales and doing everything by ear. In some ways, learning by ear is maybe potentially better, but it takes a lot longer, like a lot more hours on the instrument. Learning scales is a great shortcut for, here's a bunch of notes, sound great with that. For me, that breakthrough came with learning Fade to Black solo by Metallica and I made the connection between the major scale shape and that solo it was like way it was awesome so when I eventually found my way to music school first day first lesson with my new guitar teacher he wrote down the piece of paper scale practice 10 minutes a day I was like man you serious like I'm at music school now I get to make music and I want to practice scales and he explained another really really important part of scales which is the development of the synchronicity between the two hands so even if you don't want to play fast if you want to play like I don't know, David Gilmore or whatever you know big melodic solos when you practice scales, there's something that you learn about the connectivity of the two hands, like the note that you're playing and the movements that you make with one hand. Well, I don't know why I'm playing air guitar when I've got a guitar right here, but the, the motion that you make with the pick at exactly the same time as the finger improves as you practice with a metronome, right? That's the, a really good reason. Practicing scales up and down won't make you a better improviser, but it might improve your technique. Learning how to improvise with scales will make you a better improviser. So make sure that you're aware of that distinction. And I don't think that you should be practicing scales up and down forever, but there's a certain part on your journey, usually at the beginning of the intermediate stage, where it actually is pretty important to practice some scales up and down. Now, I would recommend for this exercise that you use the G major scale in pattern one, which is also the first scale that we learn as part of the intermediate grade as well. It's a closed position. It looks like this. So you're going to need to have that scale committed to memory, but as the title of this lesson suggested, scales with a metronome. So you're going to need a metronome, and actually, purely by chance, I happen to sell my own metronome called the Justin Guitar Time Trainer. It's a lot more than just a metronome, only costs the price of a, well, a posh pint in the pub. Uh, it's available for Android and iOS, so go and check it out. It's a really, really good, solid metronome. Doesn't matter if you use a TikTok metronome, but just do beware. Some of the apps that you get for free aren't very stable. Their timing is kind of close, but not really, and you really want to try and practice uh, your time with a solid metronome that's, that's accurate. That does make a difference, especially a bit further on down the line. Other thing you're going to need is a pick. So what pick is a very good first question and the answer is not a soft pick so if you've been doing my beginners course you would have learned about strumming with a very very thin pick for practicing scales you want a thick pick because they're far more accurate i would recommend like around a mil one millimeter would be the thickness that i'd recommend it it is a personal choice the size and the shape all of that stuff is personal if you haven't tried it before go to your store buy 10 different types and see what it is that feels good for you because it really is a personal kind of decision that but that also leads to the next question which is even more complicated it's the biggest can of worms ever and that is what do you do for pick and direction or how should you pick one thing you do need to be aware of though is the angle of the pick against the strings if i use my hand as a as a enlarged pick example you don't want the pick exactly flat with the strings this way you want it angled slightly that way 
or slightly that way okay I always go down so I hold the pick and then I crease my thumb and that creates a little bit more of an angle with the pick if I put my pick directly flat against the strings and try and pick it kind of it's real lumpy this slight angle this way it's easier as soon as I get flat, it's really good to go the other way, it still feels a bit weak, so that's not my natural. This way, it's to do with the actual shape of the pick, that's why it's pointy, is to give you that little angle and the pick will glide over the string. If you haven't tried that before, give it a go now because it will make such a, such a big difference. So when you're ready to start the exercise, you're going to set your metronome to 60 BPM, that's beats per minute. Off you go. And then you simply play the scale along. At first, if you want to play it all with down picks, that's okay. You're trying to get your note and the click at exactly the same time. Like exactly, exactly. Don't wait for it. And don't rush ahead of it. and be exactly with it. It takes practice and it takes concentration, but it's great for your rhythm. The idea that I often think of is that it's kind of like a pace runner. It's running with you. It's not a race. The metronome can't go any faster, so it can't beat you. And there's no prize for going faster than it. It's really hard to play exactly with the metronome and talk teaching at the same time. So that would be step one. Now, if you can't play along with the metronome at 60 evenly, then you need to do some more practice without the metronome first. You need to develop that being able to play the scale at a, 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 a consistent pace before you start playing it with the metronome. So 60 is your starting point. Then when you can do that, you bump it up to 70. Off you go. You can change to alternate picking when you can, probably sooner rather than later. Don't be trying to stay on down picks as you get faster and faster because that likely will lead you to all sorts of stress. Now, the rule that I use when I'm deciding whether to move faster or not, I'm not going to keep playing with the click. When you can play the scale four times consecutively, perfectly, you're ready to move it a little bit faster. If you muff it up, if you miss a note, if you fall really drastically out of time, then you just start again. If you're a little bit wandering, it's kind of okay, especially in the early stages, you're going to be learning a little bit to stay on track with the metronome, but you really want it to be sounding really good. You want all of the notes to be clear and clean, your picking to be consistent, alternate picking and not doing double downs or anything like that. It can really help to videotape yourself, to film yourself with a phone or whatever, videotape. Who's got videotape? Use your phone to film Film yourself, stick it on a against a coffee cup or whatever and film your picking hand to make sure that you're doing good solid alternate picking. Once you're through that and you can do consistently four times consecutively, you bump the tempo up. In the early stages you could probably bump it up by say 10. So from 60 to 70. So we've got 70 now. This and then etc. You do that through four times consecutively. Maybe you're going to bump it up to 80 or 90. Let's go up to 110 for now. See where we're at for that. So 110 is... starting to pick itself up a little bit at that point so you want to keep going up until you get yourself to 150 beats per minute now you might find that you can jump in tens early on and then you move up to five so maybe from 130 up to 150 you're going up in five uh, clicks per minute increments rather than trying to jump up in 10 because 140 to 150 might be a bit tough when you get to 150 here's 150 <laughs>
doing that four times consecutively perfectly. And then when you can do that, you're going to drop it back down to 75. And you're going to be playing at the same tempo, but this time you're going to be doing two notes per metronome click. So I'll drop it down now to 75. Now that's just the down. So there's down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down, up. <laughs> process repeats itself again so we've gone from 75 you might go up in tens you might go up in fives it's up to you but um, 85 that would keep going let's zoom up to halfway again say 120 yeah up to again 150 and now you're going to drop it in half again to 75 and you're going to play four notes per metronome click okay so if you're trying to get the feel for that there's 75, so down, down. Then you want to think down, 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 down. If you just think like that, you've got the da, 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 da. Then add the ups. I haven't warmed up on this today. <clears throat> My, the fastest I ever got was like 160. I don't know how fast I'd get today without it starting to get sloppy. Let's try 120. Should be okay. <laughs> That's kind of all right. This is where it gets in interesting because I used to be able to play that faster. I don't anymore practice that sort of stuff because I don't practice scales because I don't want to be a scale player. So this is a really big part of this whole thing is practicing scales has a particular purpose and that's teaching you the synchronicity between the hands. But as soon as I get to that speed, it's unlikely, like I would never want to play a whole scale up and down like that. It's just not very musical. It's not what I want to do. So I would tend to look for other patterns that I could play a lot faster than that that would work with the picking. Remember I mentioned very early on that the type of picking that you use, the picking mechanics that you use, change when you get faster. And what I was doing there, the strict alternate picking, it just doesn't work at that sort of tempo for me. It, it would be possible, like I said, I, you know, I've had it a lot faster, uh, you know, age 20 when I was doing an hour a day of scale practice and really going nuts. That, but I don't think it's, it didn't make me a better musician for doing that. And now that I've, I've uh, done a bit of study with Troy and the cracking, co the cracking the code thing, uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend spending a lot of time thinking about just practicing scales with the metronome without doing a lot of detailed thought about your picking mechanics. So I would recommend maybe getting yourself to 16th notes at 120 tops and then really delving into what it is you're going to play and working out patterns that fit with the type of picking that feels good for you because there's loads of different options there for picking and not one's better or worse than the other. They're all just different. You have to find the one that resonates for you. But that doesn't mean you should discount scale practice at these early stages. You just can't. You, there is a period of your life where you're going to have to practice scales up and down. Get the kind of the muscle memory of the fingers. So when you're improvising, your fingers just kind of naturally go to the scale places, to the scale patterns. When I'm playing through all of the different scales, I try to let my ear be the guide for what I'm playing. But because my fingers know the... The, sh the shape of the sound, if that makes any sense, they naturally go to the right place. And that's only developed through practicing scales up and down. It is a little bit boring. And I'm not suggesting you do it forever. I'm suggesting you do it for maybe a year of your life. You dedicate to practicing all five of the major scale pa patterns, then the seven patterns, linking them together, making sure that you understand them. So you've got a, a whole framework of the guitar neck 
And at that point, you should never practice scales up and down anymore, which is what I, you know, I just don't do. I haven't practiced scales up and down for a long, long time. I'm just not interested. I, and I don't feel like it's something that's going to benefit me. But for you, intermediate guitar player who's never done it before, you need to do it. So unfortunately, it's one of those do what I say, not do what I do. But I absolutely swear to you. It's a really, really great thing to have on your practice schedule. One last thing I'd like to mention is the disappearing metronome trick. It is incredible when this happens. What you want to do is set the volume of your metronome so that if you play your guitar exactly with it, it drowns out the sound of the metronome. But if you play slightly early or slightly later the metronome, you will hear it. So there's a little bit of a balance there. You've got to experiment a bit with the volume of your metronome. The, the thing that's so great about this is that when you're right, when you're bang on the metronome, you won't even hear the metronome. It's, it feels like it's disappeared completely. Right? It's amazing. And it's what you should be aiming for every time you're practicing with the metronome is for the metronome to disappear. But to get there, you have to experiment with the volume of the metronome, particularly like on acoustic guitar. If you want to sit the, the metronome up on the, on the guitar body and just turn it right down so you can hear it. And you want to make sure that you can hear it if you're not like right on it. But what you're aiming for is that when you, the attack that you make when you pick the note, that that covers up the sound of the metronome because it's incredible. Once you really get in the pocket, you'll be like, I'm playing. As the metronome stops, and you'll, you'll stop and then you'll hear the metronome again. So that is something that you want to aspire to. You might not get it straight away. Like everything on guitar, it takes a bit of practice. Most common for people is that they rush ahead. So they're playing, they're always trying to play forward of the beat all the time, like in a hurry to get there. That doesn't work. You have to learn to just sit right on it. Leaning back on the beat or playing a little bit late can sound real cool for rhythm guitar. But at this stage in your journey, I recommend that you practice playing right on the click. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you happen to be over on YouTube, really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. If you haven't already, slap me a like and let me know in the comments what your top speed is and what you're hoping to get out of doing this sort of practice and how your practice is going generally. If you're over on the website, much more likely I'll see your uh, comments. Remember, there's loads of support and you can ask questions over there as well. We'll have loads of links to all of the related resources like Troy's course and that sort of stuff and this uh, the uh, different approaches to picking video, which I'm sure you'll find pretty fascinating. At least I did anyway. So hopefully see you for plenty more very soon. You all take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.